today I'm going to be talking about waiting. I do not like to wait. I've never been a patient person. Even when I'm trying to be patient, my wife can look at me and, and tell I don't look patient at all. There's a story about a man named Ed Watt who was visiting a local department store with his wife. After they had purchased a piece of luggage and a cooler, Ed was waiting for his wife to finish the rest of her shopping and he dragged the luggage and the cooler around him over toward the shoe department. A clerk asked him if he could be of assistance. Ed said, oh no thank you, I'm just waiting for my wife. At that point, the man behind him said, I'm waiting for my wife too, but I never thought about bringing a lunch in an overnight bag with me. <laughs> there's waiting and there's really intense waiting periods. Right now with the COVID virus, we are all waiting for this to be over and get back to normal. This is not a very good normal or new normal as some people say. And waiting, I don't know if anybody really likes to wait. It's so hard, but we all have to do it. We wait for our breakfast, we wait for our lunch, we wait for a dinner. Do you see a theme there with food? When we're hungry, waiting for food is even hungry, harder and when we're waiting for something we want to enjoy, waiting is always hard. So hopefully this whole season of the virus will get over and this summertime we can enjoy all the best times we can in Michigan with the great weather. But until then, we are waiting. God created us with a mind and a soul and our minds are smart enough to know what is going on around us. Our soul, our spirit is strong enough to say, I want it now, and to push us toward making poor decisions. I think waiting is the hardest, not when you're hungry, but when you are in pain. When you're in pain, you want the pain just to stop. That's all you think about. And it's so hard when you can't make time go faster to get to that next medicine or to end a season like we're in now. The Bible is full of stories of people waiting. Abraham and Sarah, Zacharias and Elizabeth were all waiting for a child. Joseph was waiting to get out of jail, waiting to reconnect with his family. Can you relate to Joseph? The Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah to deliver them from the Romans. S Simeon and Anna, two faithful servants at the temple, were promised by God that they would see the promised Messiah, but they had to wait. For months, for years, for decades, Simeon waited for that moment when Mary and Joseph walked through the arch of the temple courts, and the Holy Spirit said, This is the one, meaning Jesus. And Simeon went over and held Jesus in his arms. Jesus knew about waiting as well. Jesus and his disciples have been traveling for years, for three years. And the disciples were waiting for that one day when Jesus would show the whole world who he was as the Messiah, as the Son of God. Jesus would show the world, but first he would have to die on the cross. Jesus would go to heaven, but first he'd have to rise from the dead. And that would not happen on the first day or the second day, but on the third day to fulfill prophecy and to show the power and timing of God. What Jesus was teaching the disciples and us is there is no easy way in this life. There's no easy way. We all have to wait. We need to be disciplined. We need to have, have trust and faith. There is no we easy way around the most difficult things in life. Jesus is telling the disciples and us to be patient, to be prepared, and to believe. He told his disciples it would be painful to wait but pray, ask God the Father for help, and then you will experience joy even while you wait. And that's really a hard thing to do, isn't it? To be happy and joyful when you don't have what you want. The closest parallel I can think about to this truth is when you wait in line with a best friend to get something. Every summer, my family and I go up to Traverse City and we go to an ice cream store called Moomers. At Moomers, they make homemade ice cream. And right next to their ice cream store is 
a field where all the cows are eating and munching on their grass. And the line is always long there, especially after Good Morning America on ABC pronounced it as the best ice cream in all of America. It is great ice cream, but you can wait 20, 30, or even 40 minutes to get your ice cream. And yet, that wait doesn't seem so bad when you're waiting with your family, with your friends. It's enjoyable because you're spending time with them. Now, I can appreciate that wait because I know what's gonna, what I'm going to have at the end, but my grandchildren don't appreciate the wait. Often, I have to take them down to the little pin area where they can look out at the cows so that the rest of the family can wait in peace. So maybe I pushed this analogy too far, but I think waiting is better when you accept it as normal, that we all have to wait. It's part of the plan. Second, waiting is better when it's shared with those you love, and waiting is better when you have something to look forward to. Right now, if we only think about all the things we want to do and can't do, then waiting is miserable. But if we look forward to the summer, like May, June, or July, all the great things, we're going to have a better attitude. And when we get there, we'll look back at this and say, we made it through. Maybe it wasn't so bad. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, we read the scripture. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I do wait and I do grow weary, but I realize I need to keep on going. I need to persevere. I need to have courage in the midst of my discomfort. Knowing there's other people, maybe more discomfort than I. I know it's a hard time to wait, but I hope that through your faith, you will find the energy to do so and to trust in God. When I think about my difficulties, I think of my namesake or who I'm named after, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul, while he was serving God and telling people about Jesus, was imprisoned, he was stoned, he was starved, he was beaten, he was bit by a snake, and he was shipwrecked. Not even including the time he fell out of a window and fell down to the ground. Or, excuse me, that was a boy. He was preaching the boy fell down, excuse me. But Paul writes, pray without ceasing. Pray at all times. And I wait better when I realize God is my companion. A preacher, an old man secret, um, who had a lot of st strong faith that I knew said that the way he remembers that God is with him in the morning and evening is he sets up an empty chair in his office area and he pretends that Jesus is there and he talks to Jesus like he would talk to his best friend and tell him what he's worried about and what he's waiting. And just that process alone reminds him that God cares and he's able to share it and he can see it with better perspective. I'm praying for you that you will be able to wait to know that you can have the courage to get through this time. We thank you as a staff at Glacier Hills for all your encouragement to us and we want you to be safe and we're looking forward to a great celebration this summer. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can trust in you. It's not easy to wait, Lord, but when we wait for the best things of life, we enjoy them even more. I pray for the patience and perseverance of all who are listening to me now. Encourage them in this time. May they feel connected with the people here in this community and the people that love and care for them outside this community. We trust in your faithfulness and promises made true in your sons, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.